Welcome back to part two of the tutorial where we are creating a little car racing game in Scratch. In the first part of the video, just to recap, we basically did a little bit of coding and setting up the backdrop for our game. Uh, the code got the car set to its start position, we got the timer working up in the top right hand corner, and we also got some background music going in the game as well. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to get the rest of the game working, so getting the car actually driving and getting these power-ups working, as well as the crashes, and working out how many laps we need to do to finish the game. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do to get started is getting this car to turn left and right. Okay, it's a fairly easy job. What we're going to do is go to the Events tab here, and instead of using the green flag this time, we're just going to use this second one when Space Key is pressed. We're going to bring that out onto our page, and instead of the space key, we're going to use the left arrow key. So when we press the left arrow key, we want this car to turn left. Okay, so simply go back to your motion tab here. The third one down is your left arrow there. Just come and drop that straight underneath. So turn left by 15 degrees. Easy as that. Then we go to the events and do the same thing for the right arrow key now. So when the space key is pressed, just change the space key there to the right arrow. So when right arrow key is pressed, this time we're going to choose the second option, so it's turning right at 15 degrees. These two little pieces of code now should have our car turning. So when we run the game, you can see the car turns every time I press my little um, mouse cursor. Okay, so that's all working well and good. We just need the car to move now. Okay, and we're not going to actually accelerate ourselves. We're going to have the car moving itself the whole time throughout the game. Alright, so in the events tab we'll make up a new script. This time we'll go back to when the green flag is clicked. When the green flag is clicked, what we want to do is just wait one second. Okay, remember we just waiting one second before our time actually kicks off. So what we're going to do is wait one second before our car starts driving. It'll just give the user time to prepare themselves to get started in the game. Okay, once I've done that, we're going to tell the car to move. Okay, and the way we tell the car to move it's back in the motion tab there, and just the first option says move 10 steps. Now 10 steps is going to be way too quick for this game, so I'm going to set that to 3. And if we don't put a forever loop around that, it's going to move 3 steps and just stop. And it's not going to go any further. So we need to go into our control tab here, and put a forever loop around that, so our car is continually moving. Alright, so let's just run the game and have a look and see. After 1 second, our car starts driving. Okay, at the moment it goes anywhere. Do some doughies, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I'll just stop that. But that little piece of code there now has got our car moving at speed 3. If you want it to go faster, just turn that number of steps up. If you want it to go a little bit slower, just bump that number down to 1 or 2. Alright, so that's looking good. Next thing you want to do is make sure that our car stays on the track. Okay, so if it hits the green stuff, we basically want it to stop and get back on the track. Okay, so what we're going to need to do here is an if-then statement. So still in our control tab, we're going to drag out the if-then statement. Okay, and we need to work out when our little car is touching the green stuff. Okay, and the way we do that is we use the sensing tabs here. And we're going to choose the second option, touching color. And we're going to put that between the if and the then. So if our car is touching the color, and it's got brown at the moment, so what we're going to do is click on that brown color and just come over and click on the green in our game and that says now if we are touching the green color then what do we want to happen well we're actually going to slow our car down and move it back three steps okay so we're going to go back to our motion here and grab the move 10 steps option and drag it in down there and just change the 10 to minus 3 so now if the car touches the green stuff then move it back three steps okay and we're going to loop that over forever and ever again. Alright, so let's put that in below the move three steps option there. Now if statement comes inside this big forever block. So if we are touching the green stuff, then move our car back minus three steps. Let's give it a test run and see what happens when we hit the green stuff. Okay, so it basically stops. And you actually have to turn to get back on track. So that's working well. So now we can't go off the grey track, so that's good. Uh, the next thing we're going to worry about are the power-ups, these little red power-ups. So basically when, this time when we hit the colour red, we want to speed up a little bit. That's quite similar to what we just did. 
All right, so let's go to the Control tab and bring out an if then statement again. In the if, sta if then statement, we're going to look to see if we're touching the color red. Okay, so where it says touching color is blue at the moment, so let's click on that blue and choose that red. So if our car is touching the color red, then we want to speed up. At the moment, we're going at three steps. Let's go to our motion tab here and move it 10 steps. We'll change that 10 to 5. So it's going to speed it up by two steps. And this needs to be occurring all the time as well, so inside the forever loop. Okay, we always want our game listening out for when we hit this red stuff. As soon as we hit this red stuff, bang, we'll speed up for just five steps. So this piece of code can be dropped below the other if then statement. Okay, now there's just one last thing I want to add into this little if then statement, and that is when we run over these red power-ups, I want the car to rev a little bit to make it sound like he's actually speeding up. And the way we do that is we bring in a new sound. So pop along to your sounds tab at the top here and hit the little folder that says upload sound from file. And in the resources I gave you access to, you'll see the car rev mp3. If you don't have these uh, resources, you can get them from the YouTube sound library, or the Google sound library, whichever one it is, and just click on open. And that's going to bring that into your account. Okay, so just press play and you can have a listen to it. Okay, I don't know if you heard that through my speaker then, but it just sounds like a car revving. So back to your scripts tab at the top now. We just want to play that sound each time we touch anything that's red. So we go to our sound tab here and simply choose the first option, play sound car rev, and put it below the move five steps. You can put it above, below, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's just quickly test that and see what happens when our car hits the red arrows. There we go. Sounds a bit funny because the sound's just a little bit too long, but you get the idea. It does rev each time it hits that red arrow. So that's sounding good. And the last thing we want to do is we want to put in another if-then statement. So if we're touching these orange markers, what do we want to happen? Well, in this case, we're going to crash and end the game. Okay, so let's go to our control tab here and bring out a final if-then statement. Okay, this one's quite long, but it's fairly simple. It makes a fair bit of sense. Okay, so just like before, we need to work out if we're touching the color orange. So let's go to our sensing tab here and choose the second option that says touching color and change whatever color's in there at the moment by clicking on it and then choosing the orange. So now if our car is touching color orange, then we want to tell it that we've crashed. Okay, so there's a few things we want to do here. First thing, I want to play the sound of a crash. So we're going to need to go to our sounds tab yet again at the top here and upload one more sound, which is called crash.mp3. It's in your files that I gave you access to. I'm not sure if you heard that, but it sounds like a car crashing. So go back to your scripts tab Go down to the sound option here and play the sound of the crash. That's the first thing we're going to do when we hit anything that's colored orange. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the look of our car. Okay, This is how our car looks when it's driving normally. In our costumes here, you might remember from the first tutorial, we created the crash car which looks like this. So yellow car 2. This is what we want our costume to change to. Okay, as soon as we hit those orange markers, we're going to switch from the normal car into the crashed car. Okay, so back in your scripts, go to the looks tab here, and there's an option about halfway down, switch costume to yellow car. Okay, so now when we hit the orange markers, play the sound of the crash, and we switch our costume to yellow car 2. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to display a little message to say that you've crashed. So the second option down in your looks menu here that says say hello. Oops, switch those two around, got them around the wrong way. Instead of saying hello, we're going to say you crashed. And if you want to write after that, please try again just to prompt the user to start the game again. You can. I'm just going to leave it at you crashed for now. Uh, something else I said that we want to do when we do crash, this time is going to keep running. Okay, so to overcome that error, we're just going to hide the time so we don't even see it. So in your data tab here, we have an option to hide variable time. Just add that into your if-then statement. Okay, and the last thing we want to do 
is stop this script from running so our car no longer moves okay at the moment it's moving three steps okay we want that to stop completely so we're going to go to the control tab you've got an option here to stop all just put that below the hide variable time and say stop this script all right that's all okay so that if then statement needs to come inside this forever loop okay so just pick it up and drop it inside that forever loop so now we've got a fair bit of code repeating forever okay so basically while our game is running so let's go through this quickly just to make sure you understand it so when the green flag is clicked or our start button is clicked we're going to wait for one second just to allow our user to get ready and that's when our code starts kicking in our forever code so the first thing that's going to happen forever or while our game's running is that the car moves three steps so our car's moving constantly at a speed of three if it touches the green though which is the grass then we take off that three steps and it goes back to zero so that basically stops our car from moving the next if then statement says if our car is touching the color red which is the power ups then we play the sound of the car revving and we move at five steps so at a speed of five that just speeds us up quickly and finally if the car is touching the color orange then we're crashed so we play the sound of the car crashing we switch the costume of the car to the yellow car 2 which is the crashed car so it looks a bit different a little message pops up and says that you've crashed we hide the time so up in the top right that will disappear and the code in this entire script here is going to stop so we can no longer move okay we'll be able to turn left and right because that's outside of this script but we won't be able to go forwards or anything so we're going to be stuck in that position so let's run it and give it a test run okay so what I'm going to look for this time is what happens when I crash we should see the time disappear and a little message come out come up we'll see the look of the car change and we'll hear a sound effect so here we go all right so that worked I'll just stop it for a sec so the music stops hopefully you saw a little speech bubble pop up to say that I'd crashed you heard the crash sound effect you can see the costume has changed and the time has disappeared okay so that's all working looking very good all right so let's work on the next step which is working on how many laps we've achieved okay basically I want this game to be a three lap race okay so what we're going to do I'm just going to go back to my events here and I'm going to bring out when the green flag is clicked now I'm running out of room here with my code so what I can do is just drop it off to the side here and I can start scrolling across into some new space okay so I'm gonna pop over here to the right now so I've got a lot of code I can always scroll back and find it okay but basically I've just moved into this new um, area where I've got a bit more space to work with so what we're going to do is count how many laps we do okay and the way we do that is we create a variable that counts how many laps we do so we need to go to the data tab here and make a new variable and that variable name is going to be called laps okay leave for all sprites selected and click OK as you can see here laps has appeared in the top left hand corner just restart that game so you can see the time as well but now we've got laps at the moment our laps is set to zero and I want to make sure that when we start our game our laps is always set to one because it's going to be the first lap that we complete so still in this data tab choose the set laps to zero option and bring it out and just change it to one as it's going to be the first lap that we complete okay and the next thing we need to do gets a little bit confusing okay. we need to make sure that our car goes past three points in our game to complete one lap okay a car could easily do a 360 and just run back over that finish line and cheat okay but we don't want that okay so instead of a car doing a 360 and just coming back over the line we want our car to go past this point we want our car to go past this point and we want our car to go past this point before it gets past the finish line okay so what we're going to do is work with our coordinates here okay what we're going to do into the control tab here we're going to wait until our car has gone past this part of the track okay and the way we do that 
is we bring in this wait until and then we go to our operators and we're going to look at the X position and make sure that it's bigger than a certain number. Okay, I know this is confusing but just bear with me. So in the motion tab, scroll down and right at the bottom you'll see the X position so bring that out. Now remember the X position is our X axis running along our timeline here. Okay, so we've got to imagine this imaginary timeline or graph is positioned over the top of our stage here. Okay, so when our car gets past this point, okay, so roughly our X position is around 145 mark here. If it's any bigger than that, we know that it's past that point. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in I have to scroll back across here. If the car's X position is bigger than say 140. Okay, so there's about 140 there. So if our car passes anywhere to the right of that, then we know it's gone past that part of our track. So that's all well and good. Then we want to make sure that our car, as it comes around, passes through this section. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep waiting. It's going to bring this out. So we'll bring it another wait until. This time the Y position. We want to make sure he's gone past this position on the Y axis. So I'll just go back to my picture here. Anything below here, it's starting to run into the negatives on the Ys. Okay, so let's go back and see where. We want to make sure he goes past roughly minus 25 on the X position. Remember I'm looking at my little coordinates here. So if he goes past y equaling minus 25, we'll know he's gone past this position on the track. So what we need to do is just go back to our operators. This time, because we're working down lower in the negatives, we need to choose the less than symbol. So we wait until, back in the motion tab, the y position is less than minus 20. So if it's minus 20 or minus 30, minus 40, okay, we know that he's passed through this position. He's gone past that section on the y-axis. And finally, back over this side, okay, we want him to go from this point onwards, so past there. So that's roughly x equaling about minus 145. Okay, so it needs to be anything less than that. So remember, on our timeline, say 145's here. Anything less than that, and we know that he's actually gone past that point. So we're working our way into the negatives on the x-axis now. So what we're going to do is just bring out another one of these wait untils. So wait until, go to our operators, choose the less than symbol, and back to the motion. We're going to choose the x position again now. So have our x position, it's anything less than minus 145 that shows that he's gone past that point and the last point is the finish line okay when he hits that finish line we'll know that he's done one entire lap okay so the way we do that one final wait until so in the control tab bring out the last wait until and the way we tell that he's hit the finish line is we just use the sensing option Okay, so we just bring out the first one that says touching mouse pointer and change the mouse pointer to finish line. Okay, very confusing. I didn't explain that overly well, but basically you're waiting until he goes past. Oh, sorry, my code keeps changing. This X position here, so we need to make sure that he's gone past that spot. And then this Y position, okay, which is minus 20. And then over to this section which is about minus 145 or less, and then around to the finish line. Once he's done all of that, we know that he's completed one lap. So that's when we can adjust our variable called laps. So what we're going to do in the data is just change laps by one. Okay, and that can be attached to that code there. Now we want this piece of code running for the entirety of our game. We want to always be checking that our car is going past these coordinates. So let's go to our control tab and grab a forever loop and just wrap it around that section of code we did. Don't put it around set laps to one, it comes below that. Okay, so once he goes past all four positions, 
that's when we change the laps by one so increase the number of laps alrighty so let's have a look and see if that actually works okay so our lap should start at one and it won't go up until we've gone the entire way around the track so let's give this a go alright so here we go what we're looking for is the laps in the top left hand corner to change as we hit the finish line that works all well and good let's try and do a 360 now go back the other way and see if the laps will change when we hit that finish line no so that's working well even though we went back and tried to cheat it didn't allow for it so we had to go past those three points one over here one down the bottom and one on the left once we pass those three points and then we hit the finish line that's when our laps will go up okay so that's working well okay we're nearly done okay last thing I want to do is after three laps we want to finish the race okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this forever loop okay I'm going to bring the code out from inside there and just get rid of the forever so we don't want this game going forever instead we want it to go for three laps so we're going to choose this section second option here in the control tab that says repeat 10 change it to three that shows that we want to do three laps and now bring the code back inside of that so it's like a forever loop but it only lasts for the three laps so it repeats all of this code three times make sure we hit that finish line three times once we do it's going to be game over okay so what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast a message to our game saying that that's the end so in our events here you've got the option to broadcast a message I'm just going to snap that on the bottom and we're going to create new message instead of message one and the name of that message is end okay it doesn't actually do anything but apart from telling all the scripts in your game that we've reached the end okay once we've reached the end we need to tell program what to do okay so still in the events tab here there's an option that says when I receive message one and message one can be changed to end okay so when I receive end drag that out into your code we want to do a couple of things here first of all we want to basically reward the player for doing so well and completing the game so when you receive end we're going to play a sound okay and the sound is going to be people cheering so I'll go across to your sound tab at the top and hit the little speaker here and you should see a cheer okay if you play it, you can have a listen to it but double click on that and you'll get cheer added to your sound library basically you want to play the sound cheer okay so add that below when I receive end so when your game ends that means when he hits that finish line for the final time people are going to start cheering we're also going to have looks and we're going to say a little message to say you finished you can write whatever you want there like you won or congratulations you finished whatever you want okay just a little friendly message to say that they've completed the game and then finally in the control tab there we're just going to stop all of the scripts in this sprite or other scripts in this sprite so it's still going to run this stuff but all these other scripts are going to stop so that means our car won't move anymore hopefully all the sounds and all that stuff stop as well alrighty so I think that's it let's give this a proper test run we're going to do three laps here if we can so I'll make it full screen when I start this flag we should see the time and the laps reset and it's game on okay so bear with me while I try and finish this without crashing hopefully So far, so good. Okay, we're up to our final lap now. So on lap three, this is our last one. Okay, not sure if you heard that through the speakers, but there were people cheering. Here's our little message saying that we've finished, and there's our final time. So 18.6 seconds. Alrighty, so we'll just close that off. Um, that's everything that I can think of. It works well. So make sure you save that up and you're done.